it is a great honor and a pleasure to be here uh, in this uh, uh, important conference. Uh, I mean, the memory of the Georgi for everybody who knew him as a, a, a dear uh, thing of, uh, which, which was important in our life. I mean, uh, studying in uh, Scuola Normale during uh, those years was uh, nice also because uh, of the constant presence, um, of, uh, at least frequent, very frequent presence of the Georgi at uh, Mensa or uh, reading uh, newspapers in uh, Scuola Normale, a person who was uh, very easy to talk to even uh, for a student. So this was really um, uh, enhanced uh, atmosphere of the Scuola Normale due to his presence. And um, um, okay, uh, maybe the reason why I'm here is uh, that uh, among us, the several uh, interests of the Georgi, there were also hyperbolic equations. Uh, actually, in this slide, I think, uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, this is the complete list of uh, papers of the Georgi dealing with hyperbolic equations. So it's a very short list, as you can see. So just three papers, and maybe one is a conference, so, uh, or two are conferences. So essentially, uh, the, the, the interest for the Georgi was rather short in time, but uh, he had a, a, a big impact on the field. Actually, in some sense, uh, he was at the origin of the uh, school of hyperbolic equations in Pisa, and uh, his idea, not only in Pisa, in the sense that uh, his ideas in, the, in this field uh, had some impact also in Japan and in Europe. And so it, it, it was really uh, short but intense interest. And uh, maybe I should briefly mention that uh, he, he, I think uh, one could say that uh, he had this intuition that uh, the balance uh, between uh, regularity in uh, with respect to time of the coefficient of uh, some hyperbolic equation and the regularity uh, of the initial data uh, could be pushed very, very far. So if the initial data are extremely smooth, then the coefficient can be extremely rough in, with respect to time. So, and this idea had uh, some very important consequences uh, also in other fields, I think. I think the origin uh, of uh, his interest was in his uh, researches uh, on uh, uniqueness problem. So he started with uh, some parabolic type equations, which later uh, became uh, a Kowalewskian type. And then, uh, uh, in some sense, it was a natural development uh, uh, passing to hyperbolic equations. Um, OK, so uh, let me briefly mention uh, <laughs> the relationship of the Georgi with nonlinear hyperbolic equations which is virtually non-existent. Uh, I, I will shortly explain why I wrote uh, this, this equation. So this equation is not a good starting point uh, for uh, hyperbolic, uh, nonlinear hyperbolic equations because essentially nothing is known. So it's, uh, I like to write it because it's deceptively simple. Uh, we consider the Cauchy problem, of course, for the wave equation plus some nonlinear term with uh, initial data even very smooth, compactly supported uh, C infinity data. Uh, but large. The problem is they are large. In the small data case, uh, you can say many things. There is an extensive theory, but in the large data case, so nothing is known about this equation. So it's uh, not, not a good example to begin with. Uh, I, I write seven because it's the first integer after five. Five is the last power which uh, can be solved uh, with uh, known uh, methods. Okay? Uh, so why I write this? Because one of the habits of the Georgi was to um, when he was in his office, sometimes he t t took a break and uh, came to other offices uh, to just uh, chat about mathematics or anything else, uh, or just uh, for curiosity to see what, what was written on the blackboard. And uh, one day I was working with Sergio on, uh, Spagnolo on some problem, certainly not this one, but for some reason this equation was written on the blackboard. And so the Georgie came in and uh, <laughs> Sergio had the idea to ask him, uh, what do you think about this equation? I mean, just, I, I just want to, to, uh, to tell you about this little pearl. So his immediate reaction with the zero latency was, uh, well, uh, I think uh, a radial solution, uh, la soluzione, uh, should blow up at the origin. So this was uh, all that he said. And uh, I think uh, this is the, his only contribution to nonlinear hyperbolic equations, essentially. <laughs> But one can discuss this, but essentially. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, it would have been nice to 
convinced the Georgi to work in this field. Uh, probably he would have had uh, many brilliant intuitions, but uh, he, he, he was uh, mostly interested in uh, linear hyperbolic equations and, uh, of course, uh, then calculus of variation, and you know. Uh, so let me mention that uh, about this intuition. Uh, what was nice was that it was uh, immediate, so no, no time to think about it, but essentially true, I think. So it's, uh, the, the blow up is still an open problem, as I told you, even in the radial case, but uh, uh, numerical simulations suggest that probably there is blow up in the supercritical case. And by the way, if you uh, prevent the solution from blowing up at the origin, you actually can prove a global existence. So it's, uh, the intuition was correct, I would, I would like to say. Okay, so um, of course in the 80s uh, we started to work on uh, nonlinear hyperbolic equations. It was clear that uh, the, um, the future was nonlinear, as you know well. And uh, um, uh, so let me, let me talk about uh, some uh, results uh, 30 years later, so what, what uh, what I'm doing in this direction. So uh, even if I never uh, collaborated directly with the Georgi uh, on any paper, I, I consider in some, self, uh, in some sense uh, descendant of this uh, tradition, okay? Uh, so uh, in this talk, I will uh, uh, speak about uh, a result on Wayne map. I will uh, shortly explain you some more details. And the, the results are contained in some joint works with uh, Chi Di Zhang in uh, Shanghai. Okay, so the problem is, uh, okay, the, the, the short way to say it, it's hyperbolic uh, harmonic maps, okay? So I hope this is already clear enough. Uh, so if, if, if you start with, uh, uh, sorry, if you start with uh, uh, a manifold uh, uh, M, uh, which has a Lorentz signature, so hyperbolic signature, and uh, consider a second uh, Riemannian manifold N, and uh, consider functions from M to N, uh, and do essentially the same thing that you do f to define harmonic maps, but with this signature, you get uh, uh, hyperbolic kind of equations, uh, which are the wave maps. So uh, this is the precise definition, which is uh, a bit uh, abstract, so you don't see really the equation. Uh, uh, it's uh, the most general way to define it is as a critical point on some uh, non-positive definite uh, functional, which is written here. Uh, if you choose coordinates, then according to the, using the metric of the target and uh, of the base manifold, you can write uh, 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 functional in ex an explicit form. The signature is non-positive, eh? so there is a one plus and the other are minus or vice versa. Uh, but to see more concretely what kind of equation, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> let me uh, first um, tell you that uh, th this, this idea is not just let's, let us look what happens if we put a, a minus sign in the harmonic map equation. This has some, some dignity, this equation. It uh, arises as a model in some physical theories uh, maybe the, the nicest uh, fact is that uh, in, in some, uh, if you make some structures, structural assumptions on Einstein equation, you get wave maps plus some additional uh, constraints. And uh, it is also a very nice test field. So you will see the equation is a wave equation with some nonlinearity, with some, uh, in some sense, nasty nonlinearity, just at the boundary of uh, what you can prove. So it's, it's a very interesting testing, test field for uh, new techniques. Um, okay, so uh, let me start with the standard case. So the, the first manifold, the, the base manifold is flat. This means Minkowski manifold, so you can write it as a product uh, R times Rn, okay? In this case, the equation can be written uh, in coordinates uh, on the target, of course, uh, in a very simple way. So you get a system of wave equations. Uh, this box is uh, the usual uh, D'Alembert operator, and then you get some uh, nonlinearity, which has a very precise structure. So you, you have some coefficients depending on you uh, and the quadratic form in the first derivatives, okay? Both time and the space derivatives of the solution. Um, so uh, remember that this, uh, keep in mind that this is a system of, of equations. Um, you can give nicer formulation, more symmetric formulation by increasing the dimension in the sense that if you embed the target uh, isometrically into some uh, RK, you can write in a very nice way as, uh, uh, so essentially 
way map is a function which takes value in some uh, sub-manifold and uh, whose uh, D'Alembertian is always at, at each point orthogonal to the manifold, okay? So it's nice, uh, nice geometric way to, to, to state the equation and actually uh, if, you, if you pick a specific target with some symmetry, you get beautiful equations, very, very symmetric equations. For instance, this is the nicest uh, case probably. If the target is a sphere, uh, you can see exactly the, oh, um, I, I should mention that uh, these gammas are the Christoffel symbols of uh, the second fundamental for, uh, of, of the target. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, so you get a, a very nice uh, symmetric structure in, in which you see the people who worked on uh, hyperbolic equations immediately recognize that this is a null form. So but more on this in, in a few minutes. If the target is described as uh, the zero set of some function, some put function, then you get a similar structure, you see. So this is a, just a complicated function of u times some uh, um, Hessian, uh, so some uh, uh, quadratic form in the first derivative uh, with, of course, f depending on u, okay? Uh, so this is the, the wave map equation when the baseman manifold is flat. And uh, in this case, there are many results. Okay, the, there is an extensive theory. Um, I, I couldn't say that everything is done, but um, the, the, there are some uh, quite general results which, which cover, give a nice picture of what goes on in, uh, for this equation. Um, so uh, to fix the ideas, of course, uh, we consider the Cauchy problem with two initial data. It's uh, very natural for a uh, nonlinear wave equation. And the standard uh, class to solve is uh, functions with values in some Sobolev space, of course. So the initial data will be in uh, uh, some HS space. Uh, HS, of course, uh, taking values in the, uh, in the manifold N. So this means uh, that uh, U takes values in N and uh, DU is in the tangent space. But okay, this is just technical and uh, does, doesn't help in understanding the equation. The critical space is uh, hn over 2. So the critical value of regularity for initial data is n over 2. Uh, this, uh, the definition of this is essentially you consider scaling, you find some uh, scaling property of the equation. The, the equation itself is invariant for this scaling. Uh, then you look for what kind of initial data, what kind of norm of the initial data is also invariant, uh, and uh, you get precisely this one. This is important, this is um, uh, more than a rule of thumb. It always happens in evolution problems that if you find a critical space, uh, you, can, you, you expect uh, uh, some, always the same pattern of phenomena. Uh, so if the, the data are uh, less regular than the critical threshold, uh, you, the problem should be ill-posed uh, above uh, the critical um, value of the, regu the critical regularity, the problem should be well posed. In, this is still vague in, in, in some sense. And uh, the trouble is uh, if you want uh, to pick initial data with exactly the critical regularity, then in that case you have to work harder to understand what's go what goes on, okay? Uh, typically in this case, this, this case uh, is interesting. I will, I will uh, say more later about this, okay. If you consider the local existence, so this is an evolution problem with a um, special variable, which is time, and uh, you, you can try, you first try to solve for uh, small times, okay? On a strip, uniformly. And uh, uh, for, for, for this problem, the theory is satisfying, uh, which means it uh, goes exactly as predicted by the, 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 f the previous slide. So for S larger than N over two, you get uh, local existence in uh, the Sobolev space, HS. Notice that uh, this is not a trivial result. If you apply the standard, uh, the old, let's say, method, uh, energy method, uh, nonlinear energy method, uh, classical methods, you, you only get uh, down to N over two plus one. So you don't reach the critical value. If you want to do this, you have to employ some uh, new me methods, which was essentially what Burgain did for the Schrodinger equation, the Kleinerman uh, and Machedon did for the wave equation for the, in the hyperbolic case, okay? So you, you need some new spaces and some bilinear estimate. This is not an easy result, even if it's only local. Uh, if, you, if you are below 
the critical regularity. Then, uh, in, with uh, Georgiev, uh, some years ago, we we gave uh, we did not. Uh, uh, this is not exhaustive. These are not exhaustive results, but uh, there are strong evidences. Uh, for instance, uh, if the target is a sphere, we construct uh, uh, two different solutions. So non-uniqueness in, in a very strong uh, strong sense. Uh, if uh, at the threshold you construct the sequences of solutions which uh, blow up at, uh, with unbounded energy at uh, time equal one, so it's uh, it's uh, you have a rather strong evidence that uh, uh, there is ill poisonness in a suitable sense, even in very strong sense below uh, the critical regularity. So. Um, I would say that uh, the picture is uh, more or less complete, uh, clear in, uh, for the local existence. But of course, the problem, the interesting problem uh, is the global theory, okay? So do global solution exist for this equation? Remember that, uh, remember, <laughs> uh, let me uh, recall that uh, there is a conserved energy with a good sign, so you expect uh, to have some uh, control on the solution. Blow up is more difficult to occur than, uh, it certainly does not occur uh, via some uh, ODE mechanism. You, you need something, some concentration, some, something more subtle. Okay, uh, so um, in a series of papers by several people, this, these are only highlights. There are many results on, uh, on these equations. Uh, also, the, the steps to reach the, the, the optimal results were, uh, were, uh, were uh, uh, more than one. So it, it took several years to get a complete picture, starting from around 80, 88, uh, 86 until uh, recently, essentially. Um, but anyway, so uh, Tao, Chatan, Struve, and uh, Tataro proved essentially that uh, if you have small data in, of critical regularity, you have global existence of a solution, okay? So you have uh, well possedness uh, at the critical regularity, and of course, this means also above the critical regularity. On the other hand, um, um, if, if, you consider, if you consider large data, the situation is still not completely clear. Um, meaning that if the target is a sphere, it, it is known since a long time that you have blow up in dimension larger or equal than three. Uh, if the target, uh, and this probably occurs also if the target is uh, compact or has some positive curvature. In the negative curvature case, uh, the situation is not so clear. So for, there are several examples of blow up but only in large dimensions. So this is still to clarify the situation for large data, okay? Um, in low dimension, when the target has low dimension, uh, so, sorry, when the, the N, the equation has low dimension, it is, uh, there is, it is still nothing known, essentially. Okay, uh, uh, one case which is especially interesting is the two-dimensional case, because in that case, the critical value N over two is precisely H1, which is uh, the energy the conserved energy. So you have conservation of energy, and in some sense, uh, if you can prove local existence, more or less, you can prove global existence by some continuation arg argument, provided the solution is so nice to depend only on the norm of the initial data, and not on uh, more refined information of the, on the data. Okay, so this is especially interesting, but uh, there are several results, and the research is ongoing on this. Some, some cases are clear, but depending on the target, you get uh, blow up or global existence. So this is still not clear, still not clear. Okay, as you see, there is a lot of work on uh, uh, this equation. Uh, let me mention one special case uh, which will be uh, assumed from now on. So uh, what happens if you put into play radial symmetry? Uh, radial symmetry means, uh, of course, it's a bit more uh, complicated to state because you have two manifolds. So first of all, you have to assume, uh, for instance, we, we are still working in the case of a flat base manifold, but the target is a curved manifold. Uh, first, you have to assume some uh, symmetry, of course, so rotationally invariant uh, symmetry for the target manifold. This means that the metric of the manifold uh, has a, a very simple structure in the sense that uh, everything is uh, governed by one single function. Uh, so this, this is, say, the, the radial, uh, vari uh, radial variable. Uh, this is, this dk2 is the metric of the sphere, and uh, this g of phi is essentially the length of meridians. So imagine, imagine some, func some uh, manifold with the rotational symmetry with the south pole. This g of phi essentially, uh, so 
if you, if you com compute, uh, move along a meridian, this G of, of phi uh, is essentially the radius of uh, the neck of this manifold, the radius, when you move uh, uh, a distance of phi along a meridian, okay? So when, uh, for instance, when G of phi goes to, uh, is zero, this means that the neck is collapsed for, uh, uh, for a sphere, uh, this, uh, this G of phi is precisely sine, uh, sinus of phi, okay? For the, for the, in the flat case, this is precisely phi, okay? Anyway, um, uh, so uh, in, in that case, of course, uh, you can, uh, okay, I, I wrote this only for completeness. You, com you compute explicitly, you write explicitly everything in, term, in terms of this function g. Uh, you do a lot of, uh, stand oh, sorry, uh, th these are two interesting e examples. Uh, the second one will, uh, will come back uh, later. So let us see, for instance, this is the metric of the sphere. You can write like this. And this is the metric of the real, real hyperbolic space of dimension n, okay? So you see everything is given by this function. The, if you choose this function, you, you know the ge completely the geometry of uh, the, the manifold, okay? Of course. And uh, so uh, now there is a, a big um, uh, strike of luck. Uh, if you assume that, uh, so uh, radial, uh, this is a, a more extensive notion than radial. Uh, this is a notion of equivariant, which means that, assume that uh, your solution, U, uh, has a special structure, so the radial component uh, of U only depends on the radial components uh, on the base manifold, and the angular component only depends on the angular component, okay? So the, the equation, the, the two parts, radial and angular, separate. Uh, actually, this is possible. And uh, the, the equation decouples in a very nice way. So for the angular part, chi, you get uh, a harmonic map equation between two spheres. So you, you have a complete classification. You know exactly, I mean, it's very easy. And uh, uh, this gives some rigidity. You have some, uh, you, you get some energy of this map here. And uh, the equation for the, the radial part becomes this one. So uh, much simpler. Please notice, no derivatives in uh, the, uh, the nonlinear term. So this is really lucky. Uh, you get a, a radial wave equation uh, plus some nonlinear, some semilinear term, some nonlinear term which depends only on phi. And uh, the, um, there is some, of course, a remembrance of the derivatives, which is in this singular factor here. Okay? So this is a, a strongly singular uh, coefficient in front of uh, the nonlinear term. Okay, um, the, of course, nothing has changed uh, concerning uh, the critical uh, value of regularity, which is still n over two. Um, actually, of course, this was the first case that was studied. So in, in this list of results is partially overlapped with uh, the, the results that I mentioned before. Uh, so. This equation was well studied, uh, starting by Chatin, uh, and then uh, uh, going on with uh, Christodoulou, Tavildar Sade, and, and others. Uh, probably the best result is due to Struve. Uh, anyway, so uh, you see, of course, we already know this, uh, a part of this. You have a global existence for small data in the, of critical regularity, blow up for large solutions, uh, but uh, in the depending on, uh, for, for some targets, it, it, there is no general results for all targets. And uh, mm, th this is nice result, which, which is only available in, in this uh, uh, equivariant uh, situation. So if the target is sufficiently open at infinity, so you see G in particular cannot, uh, cannot be sinus, uh, it, it, you, you need some, some condition like this about uh, the metric of the target, uh, uh, or even uh, weaker, condition like this, this is the improvement by, by Struve, uh, then you have global existence, okay, for large data. Okay, so this is uh, quite, quite um, general results. So, so the picture is uh, much more clear in the equivalent case. Okay, so now let's go to the main topic. This, this introduction was necessary to, uh, to explain wh why we are interested in, uh, in this much more difficult case. So what happens if you replace the Minkowski base manifold with a curved manifold. So this means consider the original, the true wave map equation. Of course, uh, the complexity increases. 
In the general case, uh, uh, there is, a, I think, no, virtually no result. Uh, this list, to my knowledge, is a complete list of what has been done in this case. So th there are some special cases that have been considered. In particular, Lori has considered the case when the base manifold is not flat, but is a small perturbation asymptotically flat of R4. So it's a, uh, th there are some results, but uh, uh, I mean, just uh, the beginning of some theory. It's, uh, there is no general result. So the, the goal here of, of this talk, I mean, the paper I'm talking about, is to prove global existence of small equivariant wave maps uh, between two rotationally uh, symmetric manifolds. Okay? So uh, essentially, it's the, in, in the, list, the long list of results uh, in the previous slides, it's just the first, uh, the, the, the simplest problem, global existence with small data. And also for this problem, of course, uh, you need some assumptions. So let us be more precise. Uh, first of all, what is the equation? Now you have two manifolds with uh, rotational symmetry. So this is the uh, target manifold, uh, uh, this is the base manifold, and this is the target manifold. Of course, again, now, now there are only two functions uh, which uh, govern the uh, geometry of target and, uh, and base manifold, uh, H for the base manifold, and G as before for the target. If you do uh, the same uh, simplifications, you get an equation like this. So now you get uh, uh, some additional complications, but still manageable, as you can see. So this is no longer the uh, wave equation. It's uh, some uh, wave equation with uh, some, uh, with some metric, uh, some rotational invariant metric. And of course, this reflects also in the nonlinear term. So you have the singularity now is the square of H. Okay. Um, let me, let me show you, of course, uh, we still consider the uh, prob Cauchy problem in the class of Sobolev spaces, as before. Uh, this is a summary of the main results. We proved uh, several things about this equation. So first of all, we proved that uh, if the initial data have, uh, belong to HN over 2 and have small HN over 2 norm, then you have global existence uh, of uh, equivariant wave maps. This is the first fact. The target manifold is arbitrary, but the base manifold, we can do this only if the base manifold satisfies some assumptions. For the moment, let me call this, uh, these man this class of manifolds uh, admissible manifolds. Dimensional larger or equal than three, uh, probably we can do uh, larger or equal than two. Um, okay, the same technique, this is uh, standard. Uh, uh, you, you can also consider uh, prove local existence for large data, essentially with the same methods. Uh, we have results of higher regularity, meaning that if the initial data are smoother than HN over 2, uh, this higher regularity is uh, conserved, is preserved by the, the, the flow of the equation, so the solution remains in HS. And uh, so this, this is more technical, but uh, the problem is that uh, using uh, our technique, which is standard uh, for nonlinear uh, wave equations, so Strickert's estimates, so fixed point in an appropriate space, uh, you can only you, you get a solution which has some additional uh, integrability properties. So it's, it's not only continuous with the values in HN over 2 or in HS, but it's also some mix of LP, LQ space. And uh, as a byproduct, uh, negative byproduct, uh, uniqueness has been proved only in this uh, restricted setting. This does not exclude the existence of other solutions in the larger space continuous with values in HS. So if you want to do this, you need additional work, and we can do it uh, only uh, if we uh, consider slightly more regular initial data. I will uh, maybe, if I have time, I will explain something about this. OK. Uh, let me also mention that uh, this is already done, written. And uh, we, we, we think that we can do also the 2D case, essentially by the same method. And uh, we can also consider, I'm pretty sure about this, uh, the, the case of uh, non-radial initial data, but the two manifolds should still be rotationally invariant, OK? So uh, but this is still work in progress. We, we have uh, the, the biggest, the, the, the main tool is already proved, but uh, the, the geometry is still <laughs> problematic. OK. So now the main point uh, of this result is what is the class of base manifold? Because uh, all, essentially, we ex extend uh, one of the classical results on base manifolds to a new class, more general, of uh, admissible manifolds. 
So what are the conditions on invisible manifolds? Uh, this is ugly, but uh, if you look uh, more carefully, you will see that uh, it, it is not too restrictive. It's a, it's a quite large class. I, I wrote it in this form in order to include all possible cases uh, which are interesting. You, you could, I will show you later some uh, corollaries which uh, are much, much easier to digest, okay? Anyway, it's, it's, it's uh, not complicated. It's only long, uh, ugly list. Um, so consider this function, capital H. You remember H is the, 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 the radius of the uh, base manifold, okay? When, when, you, when you go a distance R from the, from the south pole. Okay, consider this function here, which m should have some geometric meaning, uh, expressing some form of convexity as infinity. I, I cannot really uh, explain, but it, it's, it's clear that you can uh, uh, write uh, rather compact assumptions in terms of this capital H. Okay, so first assumption is uh, um, very important. It means uh, that uh, capital H tends to a constant at infinity, okay? Non-negative constant. So this excludes, of course, uh, spheres, or it's, uh, it's something which is rather open at infinity. Uh, this condition is, the, the conditions too are technical and actually not restrictive at all. You see, it's a, you have a mild uh, decay of uh, capital H and uh, also a mild decay of the derivatives of the, this is very natural. If you consider analytic manifold, for instance, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to produce examples uh, which do not satisfy this, okay? This is not really restrictive. The, the first one is uh, restrictive, of course, and the third one is restrictive. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, the, the, this is again uh, an assumption on the manifold which should be open uh, at infinity, and uh, this function capital P Satisfy is positive and uh, decreasing, okay? So, I, I repeat, uh, ugly list, but let me show you some examples. Uh, let, let me emphasize only that, of course, this is only a condition at infinity, and this is only a condition which is effective uh, on some, in some sense on some bounded region, so uh, near zero. Let me explain, uh, maybe with examples. Okay, first example, real hyperbolic spaces. In this case, H is this uh, hyperbolic sinus. Capital H is this function, which behaves essentially like a one over, a constant plus one over uh, sinus of R. And the P of R is this one. So you will notice that uh, the main term here is uh, one over R. Uh, you check easily that uh, this is uh, P is uh, positive and decreasing, okay? So you see in concrete cases, it's easier to uh, follow. Uh, okay, HN uh, is uh, just one example, so maybe n not too interesting, but uh, what we can do is perturb HN. So look, this, this uh, class is already quite large. So uh, consider the case of a manifold which, has, uh, which is a perturbation of a, a hyperbolic manifold, but uh, perturbation in a funny sense, in some sense. The conditions on, on mu are, so mu, decays, but uh, you see that uh, this is a, an exponentially growing factor. So in some sense, uh, this condition is re very restrictive near zero, but at infinity is, is uh, virtually non-existent. In this sense, uh, I was saying that uh, the, the third condition is only imposes some restriction only near zero, okay? And this also, also this condition is uh, Quite, uh, quite lax, so not, not really a restriction. So you see, uh, mu in some sense is small near zero, but at infinity you have a lot of freedom. So you can perturb with, uh, uh, in, in a very dramatic way, your hyperbolic space at infinity, okay? Uh, I have to admit, uh, I, 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 don't have a, I don't know how to uh, describe this, um, the, the class of admissible manifolds uh, apart from giving uh, some uh, class of examples, uh, several classes of examples uh, which uh, show that it is large, but uh, okay, maybe in the future. Okay, another example is, of course, uh, asymptotically flat manifolds, so perturbation of the flat space. Uh, so now uh, you, uh, you perturb, so R is the, precisely the metric uh, of a flat space, and you perturb it which, with something which is, uh, this is small in some sense, 
so asymptotically flat manifolds. Uh, but uh, it's easy to produce other examples. So for instance, if you want a metric uh, which grow polynomially, you can do, or you can uh, consider other metrics which grow exponentially. So we, we have some uh, general results of, uh, uh, of this form. Uh, if you find uh, an admissible manifold, then uh, the perturbation of admissible manifold is also admissible in, in a suitable sense. So you can produce uh, many, many examples. Okay, uh, let me be more precise about the statement. So consider the Cauchy problem for this uh, generalized uh, equivariant uh, uh, web map equation with uh, data of, uh, in a suitable subtle space. Uh, define H infinity as the limit of capital H, as uh, uh, I showed you before, and uh, I use this notation. So Sobolev space are, uh, as usual, given by the Laplace Beltrami operator uh, on M. Uh, I also use uh, Sobolev uh, spaces of LQ type with the weight. Okay, it's just technical to, to express the uniqueness condition, but uh, okay, the weight is given by H. Okay, this is not, not really important if you're not interested in the details. Okay, so the first result is in the case H infinity is strictly positive, so the limit at infinity is, uh, uh, for instance, the, this is the hyperbolic space case, essentially. Uh, so you have a, a global existence with a small data uh, of sufficiently small Hn over 2 norm. Okay, as, um, as already uh, said before, this is a precise statement. Uh, you have uh, this additional uh, uh, property of the solution. The solution below belong, be, belong to this uh, weighted uh, space of Stricker's type uh, for suitable PQ, and the uniqueness holds only in this uh, restricted class. Okay? Uh, the formulation for in the case H infinity equals zero is essentially the same. So I, I, don't, uh, I don't want to waste time on this because it's just some uh, uh, slightly different uh, definition of the Sobolev space. Okay? Um, now, let me also mention uh, the bit about uh, unconditional uniqueness. So, uniqueness uh, holds uh, by our, our results in this space, which is a bit uh, weird, and uh, we would like uh, a cleanest result, like the, our solution is the unique solution in the standard space, uh, bounded or continuous with values in uh, Hn over 2. But to prove this, it's not easy. For instance, in the case of the flat uh, base manifold, this was first proved uh, just uh, four years ago. And the idea was to go in some, uh, to prove some estimates in, uh, in some uh, best of spaces, spaces of a negative order, which is not difficult to do in the flat case, but in the curved case, uh, it's technical. So I think uh, this should be possible to do also in, the, in our case, but it's, it's a bit more difficult, so we didn't still do it. Uh, so our workaround for this is uh, to prove uh, first an higher regularity result. Uh, so if the initial data belong to HS for some S larger than N over 2, then the solution uh, is also, our solution uh, is also in uh, HS for all times. And uh, this is the unique solution without additional LPLQ type uh, conditions, provided S is larger than uh, S slightly larger than this quantity, which is always less than one-sixth, okay? So with uh, some additional regularity, th this is, okay, uh, okay uh, this is technical, so, but uh, anyway, with slightly larger uh, initial data, we can uh, prove uh, unconditional uniqueness. Uh, okay, I don't want to go too much into details, but uh, just to give you an idea of how this is proved. Uh, so uh, the idea of the proof is, um, um, more or less uh, the reduction to a wave equation with potential, uh, nonlinear wave equation with potential. There are some difficulties in doing this. So by a suitable choice of coordinates, uh, uh, you reduce to a wave equation with some potential and some uh, um, complicated nonlinear term. Uh, but uh, um, in order to prove uh, the, the, the main tool uh, to solve this wave equation globally are Stricker's estimates. I will say a word about Stricker's estimates in a minute just because maybe this audience is not familiar with uh, this kind of estimates. Um, but uh, to prove uh, Stricker's estimates uh, for a question with variable coefficients or with even with potential, it uh, re requires uh, a lot of work. And so uh, the first step is uh, to prove uh, in the original nonlinear and curved uh, 
setting to prove some smoothing estimate, which give uh, some uh, nice smoothing estimate for the wave equation. After we have this, we can prove Stricker's estimates, and uh, then it's just a fixed point argument with uh, appropriate spaces uh, to prove uh, global existence. Uh, higher regularity requires only tweaking of the exponents, and uh, uh, to go back to the initial setting, uh, you, you need some, to prove some equivalence of Sobolev norm. So the, the structure is simple, but uh, some, some of the steps uh, are, uh, require some work, okay? Uh, Maybe I just show you the, the, main, uh, the, the main steps. So, for instance, the, the reduction to the appropriate choices of coordinate, co choice of coordinates gives a wave equation like this in a different dimension. You have to change dimension. So this m is uh, uh, bigger than the original n. Uh, so you get a more complicated nonlinear term and uh, also an additional term, with the, which is a potential, which is uh, very singular. So a singularity one over r square. Okay. So this is, introduces a problem. It's not uh, uh, this step uh, uh, simplifies the point of view, but uh, you see that you, 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 if you want to prove Stricker's estimate for the linear part of this, you, you have to, to do some work. There are some results. Actually, there are several results. Uh, concerning uh, Stricker's estimates for the wave equation with potentials or even with variable coefficients. Let me briefly recall uh, what are Stricker's estimates, just for the part of the audience who is not familiar. Uh, so uh, notice that this e to the i t uh, d, uh, so you can, you can put here essentially, you can, this is the most compact way to write uh, the flow for the wave equation, for the linear wave equation. You could, you could say this, is, this e to the ITDF is essentially the solution of a wave equation with the zero, uh, no forcing term in initial data F zero, okay? Just solution of the wave equation. And so you, you see, you have some derivative here, negative derivative, so you, you, there is some loss of derivatives. And uh, the, this kind of uh, estimates is uh, expressed in terms of this kind of norms. So LP in time, LQ in space, okay? This is the typical uh, Stricker's estimate with loss of derivatives because uh, we are in the case of the wave equation. And there is also um, uh, the UML um, version of, the, of this uh, kind of estimates. So if the wave equation has some right-hand side, uh, capital F, then you get this kind of estimate, okay? So let, let's say, LP, LQ type estimates with the uh, loss of derivatives. Um, now, the problem is uh, this, this, this slide expresses uh, the full set of Stricker's estimate for the wave equation, constant coefficient wave equation, but we need it. And it is a fantastic tool to solve globally, especially in the case of small data. It's uh, even better than the classical energy estimate because it gives you immediately global uh, norms. For instance, uh, you see, you understand that uh, I'm working with, uh, so this is U, this is the right-hand side of the wave equation. If this is some nonlinearity, it's really perfect to work in LP norms. So you, you can easily get, uh, close the circle and uh, prove some, uh, uh, implement some fixed point uh, uh, argument. Uh, in the case of variable coefficients, there are many results, uh, uh, probably starting with Bills, and uh, we also did some work with uh, Luca Fanelli on, on the case of magnetic potentials. So uh, in our case, uh, this is uh, nastier than usual because V is uh, very singular, okay? So you, you, you need something. This case was considered also by Burke, Planchon, Stark, and Talfitazade, so potentials of critical decay, but uh, uh, we need uh, adapted results which are more adapted to our case. So it's, uh, we, we, we had to, to do it uh, independently. Um, okay, this is, maybe I can jump over these slides because this is just an idea of uh, how one can go from smoothing estimate to Stricker's estimates, so maybe, uh, uh, okay. Uh, let me also mention, uh, maybe this is my last slide, so let me just conclude on this. Uh, so. Uh, the, the, the first part of the, of the, the first difficulty was to get Stricker's estimate for the wave equation with a very singular potential. And to do this, we prove some other estimates uh, at the level of the original coordinates on the, on the manifolds. Okay, but by a more or less a standard uh, uh, chain of ideas, you can produce a Stricker's estimate for the wave equation. 
Uh, there is an also an additional difficulty, and if you want to work in fractional spaces, uh, uh, you need some uh, good estimates for the nonlinear part, of course. And uh, this also was not uh, completely trivial to get. Of course, it's uh, just uh, some uh, more or less uh, classical uh, methods, but uh, to prove an estimate like this for some singular function here requires some, in, in fractional subolate spaces, requires some additional work. Once you have uh, these two main blocks, uh, the, the proof uh, is essentially a fixed point argument, of course, uh, with appropriate choice of uh, indices, and uh, you get uh, the, the, the first part of the result, uh, existence and uniqueness of global solution. If you uh, tweak the indices, uh, you can uh, produce also the higher regularity result and the unconditional uniqueness. Uh, uh, and uh, I think I can stop here a bit earlier, but I, nobody will complain. Thank you for your attention. Some question. Instead, uh, so sort of the idea could be that maybe there is a coarser topology where to to prove compactness, and that's easier. Uh, depends on what in what result are you, you are interested in. I mean, the, the, um, essentially. You get, uh, you get virtually no improvement uh, in the structure of equation uh, by radiality. I mean, if uh, in this case, uh, the equation itself becomes much simpler. But for the usual uh, semilinear wave equation, for instance, in the radial case, there is virtually no, uh, no improvement. The only thing is uh, the George's remark that uh, you know where the singularity will occur. But because the energy cannot concentrate along a circle, it must concentrate, uh, prefers to concentrate at a point. But, uh, Block mechanism, uh, the equation is local, so uh, everything happens inside the cone. Uh, essentially, radiality on, uh, happens inside the small cone. It depends on what result you're interested in. Uh, let me also mention that um, uh, global existence of weak solutions can be proved, of course, but the problem is uh, regularity and uh, uniqueness. Uh, I don't know if uh, this answers the question. Uh, you, you, are you asking if the sign, the, if you change sign, what happens? Uh, no. Yeah, it was a plus. Yes. Yes. The sign is essential, of course. I mean, uh, if uh, with plus, so remember, it was a minus Laplace u plus u to the seven. Then you have a positive energy, and you have hope of uh, global existence. Uh, it, everything is possible. I mean, maybe I'm optimistic, but uh, it was a box of u plus u to the seven. Th this equation. For this equation, uh, the the big problem is global assistance with large data, and you. Ma Sorry. The good sign, yes. If if you have minus, it's trivial to produce blow up, of course. If, if, if you have a minus u to the seven, then it is easy to produce blow up uh, examples, L really by an ODE mechanism and localizing. But uh, in the plus sign, uh, for, for a long time, uh, people expected uh, global existence. But uh, n good numerics, uh, better and better numerics, sh seems to show that you have blow up. And also with some. Uh, no standard mechanism, no, not a self-similar blow-up, but uh, many different types of mechanisms. So it's a, it's a really complicated problem. Some other questions? 